Hey guys, Lane here from Maker's Lane. Today, we are going to make an Atlas stone with a custom logo. Let's get started. Here are the basic materials I'm gonna use for this project. Uh, first off, you're gonna need and want gloves. Uh, the other thing is this fiberglass mat. This is why you're gonna want gloves. This stuff will cut you. It's not very friendly. Something to mix the uh, resin in. So the resin is a two-part resin. The next thing you're gonna want is some sort of spherical object. I am using a ball from like a ball pit at Walmart. These are, these are pretty easy to pick up. I think this was like $3. And then you can get them in various sizes. So like this is a smaller one that I actually blew up and made it bigger. So this will be a 10 inch, this will be a 12 inch. The 12 inch is the one I'm gonna make today. But if you want smaller ones, you can get a smaller ball and then like deflate them and inflate them to the correct size. The other thing is I have this board here so this is what I'm gonna to use to make the template. It will end up looking like this, but a little smaller. This is for a 16 incher. I have a template here that I'm gonna to use to actually cut the uh, circle in this board. So I have this pivot point is the circle, and then I'm gonna draw a line with this, and then I'm gonna actually use a jigsaw to cut the hole. So it just has the different numbers on it for different sizes. So I have eight to 18 inch. The other item is this Concrete, this is the main thing that the project will be made from. So this is the 5000 series. It's a stronger concrete. You can pour it with the cheaper concrete. I think this bag is between five and $7. And then like the typical yellow bag you get for generic concrete, I think is more like four to $5 range. So it's a little bit more expensive. It holds up a little bit better. It's kind of a little bit smoother when it comes out. So that's what that's what we're gonna go with today. This is all the material need. The last thing that's gonna be added to this that's gonna make it kind of unique is I have a 3D printer and I 3D printed this. It's my emblem backwards. So that way when it comes out of the concrete, it'll it'll actually have my emblem in it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this inside of it. Oh, one thing I did forget. So you don't have to use this if you don't want to. So what I like to do is a mold release. If you're, if you're doing a one and done, then you break the mold after you're done using it, it's not a big deal. But if you wanna to continue to reuse it, you're gonna need some sort of mold release. All I do is I get this a little bit hot, I heat it up with my torch, and then I put some petroleum jelly in. So I don't really have an exact mixture. Basically, the mineral spirit makes it liquid, makes the petroleum jelly liquid, which means this is, a, this is basically a barrier between your mold and the actual concrete. And that's all that's for, but you don't need it if you don't want to. Yeah, so this is all the material you're gonna need. So let's get started with the build. So the first thing we're gonna do is make the mold. How I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna use this ball. This is about a 12 inch ball. We're gonna actually make this in two, the mold in two halves. So we'll make the first half and then we'll make the second half. I'm gonna drill this into the center of the board. And then this is basically a pivot point. So this is free spinning. And then I'm gonna mark a line for the 12 inch. So I got different marks on here. Take it off and use the uh, jigsaw to cut the circle in it. All right, so here's the ball. I'm gonna try and get an angle of it. So you can kind of see it right here, that little guy there, that's the parting line. So that goes all the way around. So all I do, so I shove it down, and can you see that parting line? It's not, so see how it's above it right now? So I just go and I kind of push it so it's like right there. And then you gotta go all the way around, do the same thing. So you can see it here. I just push it in a little bit. And it'll come back up a little bit. It kind of springs back up. So you just gotta kind of push it past and then come back. And see how it's just perfectly right there. That means I'm exactly halfway on this ball. So each sphere is perfect. Each half of the sphere. So I'm just gonna do it over here too. See how high that is? See how it's up here? So I just push it down in. All right, like that. It all lines up, so all the way along. All right, so now that I got that all set up, the next thing I'm gonna do is take my fiberglass mat. I like to work with this. 
you can get the uh, like flake kind or whatever and work with that, but I'd much rather have this to work with. So I like to cut it into sheets so that I can just kind of lay it on like paper mache. So I'm gonna cut this into some strips to lay across there. So I cut it for strips long enough to go over and then have a little bit to tuck over. ready for the resin. I got scale here, I put the cup on here, and I zero it with the cup on here. So from here, I'm gonna pour resin. So after some trial and error, I've realized that I can't spread it quick enough before it starts to set up. So I try to keep it under 10 ounces. I've tried 15 and it starts to go bad before I can finish. So I think I might have forgotten this earlier. You're gonna want one of these. It's a really cheap paint stick. I think these are like 90 cents or something like that. So this is what I use to actually spread, spread the resin. For safety reasons, you're gonna want a respirator and then also be in a very well ventilated area. I have my door open and then I have a fan over here blowing. So basically it's blowing the air that way because these fumes of, from from this resin, is they're, they're pretty toxic. So now I'm gonna sound very muffled. So this is very important. You can use a regular dust mask, but I wouldn't recommend it. I'd get a nicer one where it actually filters the air pretty well. So here we go. Start the pouring process. Ten ounces. That's about how much it gets you. I haven't put the hardener in yet. Whatever number this is, including the, the numbers after the dot, that's how many drops you put in. So it's going to be a hundred drops of this. So I'm trying to keep it all the way. Okay. So then you just take your sheet, put it about halfway. All you have to do is kind of tuck it in there, nice and tight. And then my method, I use I kind of pat it, kind of get it worked in there. Kind of work with some, kind of pat it in there. Basically you want it soaked, so you don't want to be able to see the light anymore. You kind of want this, uh, well for this it's going to be green, but the resin's kind of brown color, so you want to be able to see the brown better than you want to see the white. So this is basically all you do. If you've never poured resin before, I'm sure you could look up a video on how to do it exactly, but this is how I do it. So. Alright, that's the first piece. From here we basically just keep working around. I just slowly, what I'll do is I'll just slowly take this, this piece, and I'll slowly I'll overlap it about that much at the bottom. The bottom is basically where I care about. The top's going to have a very thick layer on it. So. been sitting here for about 20 minutes or so what I like to do at this point is try and take the mold apart from what I've experienced if it sets up too much it starts sticking to this uh, board and it's really hard to get the mold off I like to wait about 20 to 30 minutes start taking it apart that way I can actually it doesn't actually stick to the thing and it's a little bit easier to get out but you want to be careful because if you take it out too soon the whole mold will obviously fall down on itself so 
I think it's been long enough. I'm gonna start taking it apart. Okay, so I got it off. It's still definitely setting up, so I'm gonna put this in a flat area. So while that one's finished gearing up, I'm gonna set this one up for the next set or next round. All right, so now we're gonna start mixing and pouring like we did on the last one. I'll come back in about 20-30 minutes, take that one off like I did with that one, put it on another flat surface, and then we'll have our molds made. Alright, <clears throat> that's what they look like. Both of them had a couple hours to dry. What we're going to do next is just cut, we're going to cut about a two inch lip on here so that we can clamp the two pieces together. So I'm going to use a bandsaw to cut that. Next thing we got to do is put a hole in one of these. To do this, I'm going to use this three inch hole saw bit. Okay, so now that one has a hole in it. We have our mold and we're ready to go. So the very last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my emblem that I 3D printed and I'm gonna put it in the bottom of the one without the hole. So this one has a hole, this one doesn't. All I'm gonna to do to hold it in place is put some hot glue on the back of here and then stick it in there. And this stuff is, like I said, flexible material. So it should be able to conform to the contours and then we'll have a nice emblem hopefully when we're done. There we go. Just like that, you have an emblem. The last thing we're gonna do before we put them together and uh, pour the concrete is this is Vaseline and mineral spirits I was telling you about earlier. All I'm gonna do is just pour a little bit in here. There we go. Now they're both covered. And we can start pouring concrete. Okay, so now we're gonna start mixing the concrete. I like to have it a little bit more liquidy. So what I like to do, just to kind of keep the dust down, is put it into a bucket first outside and then pour it into a bucket full of water. That way it's already liquid. When it goes into the bucket, it's a little bit easier to mix. Let's now pour it into the mold. What I like to do here is take my Sawzall without a blade in it and kind of just give it a little shake. So I just put it on the side here. And it'll get, there's a couple, you can't really see them very well, but there's a couple bubbles in here. This isn't really that bad. It's the top part where you have to really worry about this guy, so. Let's put the top on, and then we can pour the top. So I like to put a crap load of clamps on here, so that's what we're gonna do.
funnel. For the rest. sit for the next couple of days and let it set up uh, I would recommend at least two days but as long as possible four to five days would be perfect so the mold release will release it from here but the longer you wait the easier it should be to get out of here because as this sets up it should shrink so it should come to a point where you can just pop these off no big deal so we're just gonna sit and wait I guess All right, it's been sitting up for a little over a day now. I probably should wait longer, but I am very impatient, so I'm gonna open it right now. This just means it's probably gonna be pretty difficult for me to get open, so uh, here I go. this one the ball itself turned out pretty well I'm not not too upset about it the main thing I, I'm upset about is how this emblem came out so here's a template I used I think the issue was I tried to do all of my logo like so you know my logo is makers lane and then imagine design build well the imagine design build I think was too small some of the concrete got stuck in it and came out with the template itself. So really I wasn't, I'm really not that happy with the logo and I don't want to, that to be it. So I went ahead and made another one. It is a little bit bigger. So this one's 140, it's a, 15 inch ball and this one's a 12 inch ball and I think it's right around uh, 80, 90. I actually have to go weigh it. So on this one, the logo came out a lot better. It's still a little wet. I just took it out of the mold earlier today. So it's still drying up. That's why it doesn't look perfect. But I'm telling you, it's a hundred times better than this one. What I did for this one, I thinned up the emblem itself. This one's a lot thicker, so it's about Probably all in all, with, with everything sitting here, it's about a quarter inch thick. Uh, this one, however, is like a tenth of an inch thick. So very thin. And it came out a lot better. So if you're gonna 3D print an emblem, print it very, very thin. You don't really have to print it that thick and you still get a pretty good impression. There is one more step that we need to do to these to get them perfect. We're gonna take the grinder with a sanding pad on it. Looks like this. It's just 60 grit, I think, sandpaper. And we're just gonna take this outside. Just make sure you do it outside because this will put up, put out a lot of dust. Let's take these outside, sand them down, and we should have ourselves some apple stones.
we got them all sanded down. I'm gonna weigh them and it should be all done, ready for us to work out. two different atlas stones this one came out to be 81 pounds this one came out to be 144 a little bit heavier than i thought it would be not a big deal there is some variability this one just came out a lot more than the other two did now i guess left to do is make sure they work i came from the mud there's dirt on my hands all right so now that i tested the stones now my buddy Joe and I are going to play a game called Stone Over Bar and basically all this game is is we lift the stone up over the bar, throw it on the other side. It's kind of like tennis, you throw it back and forth and the last person who gets it over wins. <laughs> Well, that was a fun little game we played. So all in all, it turned out really smooth. The logo turned out super well. I'm really happy with how, how it came out. I know the first pour didn't really do well, but that's kind of what happens when you do some trial and error. This was, uh, this was a fun project. We're actually now selling these after we made, made these. Uh, we figured uh, it was actually a lot of fun to make. We, we wouldn't mind selling them on the side. The link is in the description below. What's, what's really cool about what we do is we add a custom logo, so if there's something that you want us to put on it, like say you want a snake or a dragon or a rhinoceros, as long as the design's not too complicated, we can basically put it in the stones. Something a little bit unique. If you have any questions, hit me up in the, in the, the comments below. I'll try and answer any questions I can. We plan on doing a couple more fitness uh, videos. We kind of got a couple other ideas of pouring concrete and some other maybe fitness equipment to make it easier for some at-home workouts that you don't have to go and socialize as much. So make sure you hit the subscribe button to see, our, see any future fitness projects. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, I'm Lane from Maker's Lane. You guys have a good one.